The Fusion Simulation extension gives unlimited access to Fusion's simulation workspace, which without the extension would charge varying amounts per solve on the different study types available to us. This can be accessed through the extensions button within the main interface and gives us access within the environment to various simulation types, including nonlinear static stress, structural buckling, event simulation, modal frequencies, thermal steady state, thermal stress, electronics cooling, and in the manufacturability section, injection molding simulation and shape optimization. This information can be found within any installation of Fusion. So if you would like to investigate this further, you can easily access it through the same link. To begin working within the simulation options, we would switch from whichever workspace we're currently in, in my case, the design workspace to the simulation. From here, we have the ability to not only set up the simulation environment, but also begin to view the results of various inputs. As we can see on screen here, we have a brake pad that has gone through a thermal study whereby we have particular inputs on the brake pad itself and begin to determine based on various outputs, the threshold and the energy subsidence throughout the material itself. This is really neatly done within a single interface whereby we have the ability to start a study and then based on the study, we get a few different input options available to us. Again, in this case with the thermal, we have the ability to apply various thermal loads to the component. We have then the ability to, using those thermal loads, uh, begin to apply either an applied temperature, a heat source, radiation, convection, or internal heat, and watch how the temperature begins to dissipate throughout the component itself. In this case, we have in our loads a heat source, which is engaging with each of these surfaces, and then convection on the outside of the part whereby the heat can begin to escape. Using those, we can then begin to push in varying values and, and start to ascertain what the limitations of our particular product are, and begin to make adjustments not only to the design but to the workflows before we even go and physically create parts. For some of our plastic componentry, we might want to begin to look up the injection molding and be able to ascertain where the correct or optimal points are in which we can actually go and inject the, the plastic into the mold itself. So in this particular example, we've got the ability to run a study whereby we go and pick individual points in which we want to go and inject the, the plastic into, and we can then start to see how not only the material itself begins to fill out the mold, but start to ascertain where there might be any warpage and where certain surfaces might get some um, cooling and, and contraction marking on them. Within this, we also have the ability to adjust the process that's involved in the creation of this part, and then again, begin to solve from within here. In another example, we have the foot of a table, whereby we have fixed positions within the model itself that cannot move, and we've gone and applied a load to the connection points to ascertain how and where the buckling might occur within a particular part. The benefit to this is a recently added point mass where we no longer have to go and apply a calculated force against the connection points themselves, but we can also go and assign a point mass somewhere within the model. And in this case, I've got a mass towards the top front of the part itself or to the side of the part over here, um, in this case, 50 kilograms, I can begin to ascertain what would happen if we were to just place a 50 kilogram mass right in the front in that location and based on its proximity and, and its offset from those connection points, it will do the calculation as to 
um, the bending moment and, and any other loads that might need to be applied. All we know that all we need to input is the position in which that mass needs to take place, as well as then the, the surfaces that that particular mass is inherently connected to. With each of those, then we can go and begin to resolve and, and look at the results for each of those. Then um, you can see we get to see some of the deformation that might begin to occur against that, where the various loads will be located, uh, what the safety factors are. We can see that in this case, we've, we're just under a safety factor of one, meaning that the study itself has, has failed. We then potentially need to go and increase the, uh, the thickness of the component. But we can also then start to break down well where the stresses are located for this particular um, study, uh, what displacement there is in the geometry itself throughout the, the reaction, um, as well as where the strain might be located. This is initially in a bit of an exaggerated view, but if I were to go and look at the actual deformation against that, we can see that um, even though it hasn't buckled as much as the initial view would uh, like us to believe, we've got the ability to then see um, what the actual buckling would look like if it were to go through this. But the fact that this has uh, gone beyond the safety factor would mean that we would want to go and, and bump up the thickness or, or the strength of the component itself. These studies then also um, come with a, a detailed summary uh, as to the results and, and start to give some hints as to what could help begin strengthen um, if you are under the safety factor and then potentially what you could um, weaken if, if needed if we are well above a safety factor and have over-engineered a particular part. Um, and same with the control switch over here. If I were to go to the results um, of the, the simulation itself, um, we can see that it will begin to download those results from cloud and then allow us to go and run through the injection molding process throughout. So we can see here um, the average temperature at the fill itself. Uh, we have a fill animation as well where we can begin to watch through the timeline itself um, how the material will start to push through the molding. We've also got a full confidence as to how well particular regions might fill compared to others. Uh, in this case, the simulation identifies that this should be a fairly easy one to, to fill in. Uh, but we've also got then the quality. And we can see that where the material itself is getting a bit thinner, um, the, the quality prediction is a little lower, but not too bad in there either. And then we've got the injection pressure and a few other uh, ways of identifying where and how we can begin to better improve the injection points to get better results in this. Again, without needing to go through the process of actually creating, first of all, the molds, which can become quite expensive, uh, but also then before e even finalizing the design, the design engineers can begin to run these simulations very quickly and with the simulation extension as many times as they want to, iteratively adjusting the design throughout the process. If you'd like to find out more about the simulation extension inside of Fusion, please do get in contact with us. Otherwise, bye for now.